So what I do in my research uh, in the last couple of years is investigate different forms of subjectivity. Uh, this is what I find uh, very interesting in psychoanalysis. And generally speaking, Freud had talked about three different types of subjectivity, uh, which he called neurosis, perversion and psychosis. Now, in my research in the last couple of years, I was trying to progress the notion that autism should also be acknowledged as a singular subjective structure in line with these three forms of subjective subjectivity that Freud elaborates in psychoanalysis. Uh, now, this means that uh, we have to uh, adjust our metapsychology, but maybe most importantly, our clinic, our clinical approach to autistic people and reinvent the clinic in order for it to comply with uh, this unique form of subjectivity. Now, what is interesting, and maybe a, a lot of people don't have that in mind today when we say this word autism, is that at the beginning, at the outset, uh, even before it, it, it was acknowledged by, uh, let's say, the famous uh, psychiatrists uh, Kanner and Asperger, which were the first to actually distinguished autism as a, as, a, as, a, as a singular form of diagnosis, is that autism was conflated in psychoanalysis with psychosis. So this was due to the fact that um, autism, when it, when it starts at a very, very early age, uh, shows itself uh, symptomatically in ways that uh, children which I diagnosed with infantile psychosis uh, convey similar symptoms. So at this very early age when uh, a subject is not uh, what we call today very functional on the autistic spectrum, uh, at that point psychoanalysts were really confused and confused these two categories. So at that point autism was considered to be a form of psychosis, what was called infantile psychosis. A unique form of psychosis that happens at a very, very early age and due to its early onset has more, uh, let, let's say, stronger effects on the development of intelligence, emotional intelligence, etc. Et so that, that was the idea at the time. Now what I, am, what I was interested in uh, in my research is to also distinguish these two psychoanalytical categories and do that thoroughly. In my research, I did it in many ways, and one of the ways that I found very interesting uh, to distinguish these two is through the writing of autistic and psychotic uh, subjects. Now, the matter of reading the writings of patients is not a new one, I, I have not invented it. Uh, of course, we see it in Freud, uh, in his reading of Schreber's text. Uh, on the basis of Schreber's text, Freud developed a theory of psychosis, one of the only ones we can find in Freud. Uh, but when we look at the written world, we need to acknowledge that it carries, it, it carries a, different, uh, a different value than the spoken word. Uh, first of all, and this is something that we sometimes forget, is the fact that we learn to speak before we learn to read and write. So this shows you that there is a distinction here, although even here. Uh, moreover, when we speak, uh, we always speak to another. We always address our speech to another. While when we write, we sometimes write to ourselves. So these things have, make write, the writing of patients to be, I think, a, a very valuable uh, aspect of our investigation of these forms of subjectivity. And today I would like to mark out a clear distinction between the writing of autistic subjects and the writing of psychotic subjects. Now, autistics do a lot of writing, uh, especially when uh, they get to a point where writing becomes available. In fact, writing is one of the access points autistic have, autistics have to language in general. Um, now, there are many autistic writers that I'm going to recommend in the end of this video, uh, but maybe let us go through some, some of the uh, common features of autistic writings that you find. One of them, the first one, is quite obvious when you, when you read uh, the books written by autistics, as that 
uh, autistic right in order to be recognized as intelligent beings. Uh, there is a very strong prejudice against uh, autistic people and a lot of books are written in order to demand to be acknowledged as intelligent speaking beings. And you see a lot of work that is done and revolves around this, uh, this topic. Uh, autistics demand their difference to be taken into account in society and not marginalized and excluded. Uh, autistics write in the name of autistic people. So this is also something that's very interesting. They, they write speaking for the autistic community, for autistic colleagues and fellows. And when they write, they emphasize, emphasize that autistics can and should be integrated into society, taking this difference into consideration. Now, you have a very special book written by Temple Grandin, who is a very interesting autistic uh, writer and advocate. Uh, she is also a professor in university and written many books. One book which I truly recommend is called uh, Thinking in Pictures. And when Grandin writes, she does her writing in, in exactly this sensitive way and with these goals in mind. Now, when we look on uh, psychotic writing, on, on the written word, on books written by psychotic patients, uh, we see a completely different uh, picture. First of all, uh, psychotics usually don't claim to be psychotic or don't emphasize this fact in their writing. They usually even deny that such a diagnosis has anything to do with the value of what they are writing at this point. Uh, they usually don't write in the name of other psychotics. They usually write in the name of humanity, something that is available and, and, and relevant for, for every human. Uh, they address humanity as a whole, in this sense. And most of them progress a sort of personal discovery that they have made or encountered in their life, uh, which they believe will have a profound and deep impact on society, culture, um, etc. Right? So this is very different from autistic writing, and it, it actually demonstrates this fundamental difference that I've, I've been very much insistent to, to emphasize in these two subjective structures. Uh, to, to my view, it, it really um, brings out the fact that autism cannot be considered to be a form of psychosis and that these two uh, distinct subjective structures should be approached differently in the clinic, in a very different manner. Um, now, I urge the listeners of, of, of our videos to, to read some of the writings uh, written by autistics. Um, I'll give some names. Uh, there is Donna Williams wrote a lot of books about her autism, extremely interesting, succinct, colorful language. Jim St. Clair, which I'll read uh, a quote from in one second. Amanda Baggs, very interesting autistic, um, well, we can say writer. Uh, Amanda Baggs uh, only uses written language in order to convey her, her thoughts and emotions. She does not speak. Uh, so this is, again, a very interesting case to, to get, get yourself into and, and investigate. And Temple Grandin, of course, and more. So these autistics uh, write pieces that are moving, uh, but also fascinating. And let's end with a quote uh, from Jim Seclair, which I think uh, really emphasizes uh, the, the distinct quality of, of autistic writing. And this quote, I, I cannot say how much uh, I agree with. I, I agree with it very, very much. Yeah. Uh, so here goes. Uh, so Jim Sinclair says, uh, autism is not something a person has or a shell that a person is trapped inside. There is no no normal child hidden behind the autism. Autism is a way of being. It colors every expression, every sensation, perception, thought, emotion, and encounter, every aspect of experience. It is not possible to separate the autism from the person. And if it were possible, the person you'd have left 
would not be the same person that you started with. So I think this is a really moving, uh, moving piece by, by Jim Sinclair and I invite our listeners to, to read some more. <laughs>